3,500 tons of dirt and nearly 2,000 tons of pulverized granite filled a 298,000 square foot blimp hangar. We are using, I think, a bigger set than anyone has ever used before. We have about three quarters of an acre of moon, which is never big enough, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, when I first saw the moonscape, I guess my reaction was, this should work. Our director of photography, Gail, Gail Tattersall, has created an amazing uh, sun effect, which is really what sells this as being real. The solution um, turned out to be using a convex mirror about six feet in diameter and then projecting into it the most powerful um, uh, spotlights that are available in the film business today, which are 10K xenons. There were only 15, I believe, in the United States, and we had to have five made extra just to be able to get um, our brightness level up to being able to record on film. I would say the light that we have created to simulate the sun on the moon is probably one of the single brightest light sources ever created for anything. We figured out it was going to be very hot because when we were doing tests for this, my best boy was lining up Xenon's with welder's glasses on and his hair almost caught on fire. <laughs> the greatest challenge is eliminating the effect of gravity. That's what we're using our helium balloons for, to create, to, to reduce the weight of our astronauts to one-sixth their real weight and create the look of what it would be like for them to move on the moon. For accuracy, the topography of the moon set changed to match the different landing sites of each lunar mission. Everything we're trying to do <laughs> with, with, the, with the stuff on the lunar surface is to show it in a way that's never been done before and to honestly make it feel